I hear dead people. <laughs> Anyway, let's talk about clairaudience. So, you know, if you haven't watched the clairvoyance video, I recommend checking that one out so you can understand how all this is even possible to begin with. So without further ado, here we go. Clairaudience is the extrasensory perception ability where a person hears sounds, voices, and or messages from sources beyond the physical realm, such as human, non-human, living or non-living, beings, entities, etc. Those with these skills tend to have enhanced auditory perception that allows them to receive information through energetic vibrations outside themselves and can come across and be received as inner thoughts, words, or sounds that are heard within the mind rather than through physical ears. However, your physical ears may be more in tune with a wider range of sounds and frequencies than the average person. So it is possible to also hear more things with your physical ears. When messages come in through your metaphysical ears, these auditory perceptions may sound like whispers, clear voices, music, or other sounds that are not physically present or may be not be heard by other people. Animals, on the other hand, can sometimes perceive it, though. On the positive end of the spectrum, messages can be in the form of guidance, advice, warnings, or insights about various aspects of life. Or, on the negative end of the spectrum, especially when dealing with negative entities, you can receive intrusive negative thoughts, oppressive and or grotesque sounds, knocks, scratches, growls, etc. This psychic ability tends to commingle with claircognizance and sometimes can be confused with it due to the nature of how a person receives the information. Personally, I experience clairaudience as people communicating with me telepathically. I can hear their thinking or regular voice in my head like I'm having a regular conversation with them. I will be able to hear accents, tones, pitches, gender, etc. Sometimes the thoughts have an airy light vibe which makes it difficult to hear the different aspects of the voice itself or it will sound like my own thinking voice. When I was a kid I used to combine my clairaudience with my clairsentience like a bat. And of course at the time I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even know like that was possible, but it turns out that's what I had been doing. And now that I understand what was happening, it is easier to perceive spirits and entities around me, even if I don't physically see them or see them clairvoyantly. Essentially, I would close my eyes and just listen for sounds. Through my perception of sound waves, I could hear and feel them bounce off objects, giving me information of where things are or were. Basically, echolocation. It's very useful for seeing in the dark or playing hot lava with your friends. <laughs> Another way to describe it is like hearing a dissonance in the air between particles and molecules. I mean, that's the only way I really know how to describe it from my perspective. Personally, I can hear all types of frequencies with my physical and metaphysical ears, such as electricity running through lights, appliances, and electronics. To be honest, that kind of gets annoying after a while when I'm trying to focus extremely, extremely hard, or like if I'm meditating, sometimes the sounds around me distract me and get on my nerves. I can even hear natural sounds from the earth, like hums and buzzing. At times, I'll hear ringing in my ears, which signals to me a whole range of things, such as pressure shifts, energy changes, and spirits or entities wanting to talk. 
I did make a chart and I posted it to my Patreon of like what each sound means or what each pitch in my ears mean and versus which side it's on. So if you want to see that, you would have to be a patron because it's a patron only feature. I ain't gonna be posting it anywhere else. It's only for the patrons. On the other hand, if you don't wanna do that yet, you can create your own little guide or key that you know you can use for yourself that is unique to yourself and essentially you know if you put meanings to each thing and which side and if it's a high pitch or a low pitch ring you know you can pretty much say hey this is how I want to communicate and spirit will abide by that why because they if they really want to talk to you they're gonna have to get on your terms basically but yeah, you can do it that way. So it's unique to you. And when it's unique to you, it's easier to remember. On the more negative side of things, through personal experiences, you may pick up noises that you may have otherwise not have realized or noticed, such as the sounds of electricity going through your appliances and electronics. Because, you know, like I stated earlier, it is annoying. It is annoying. Or you may have spirits interjecting their thoughts into your head that may be negative and sound like intrusive thoughts. Negative entities will do that to you purposely to lower your vibration. So like if they can convince you that you're a worthless piece of you know what, and you start to believe that, that's gonna lower your, your vibration and you don't wanna get into that mindset. It's pretty much a downward spiral from there and you need to get yourself out of that. But yeah, they'll do that to lower your vibration, which is why I cannot stress enough the importance of meditation because it will allow you to understand your thinking voice and your thought patterns from anything outside of yourself, which will in turn help you distinguish your own thoughts from another being, spirit, or entity. This is important. This is important. Please, I can't stress enough. You need to do this. If this is like one of your main abilities, you need to do this. I don't care what you say, you need to do this. Why? Negative entities will attack you psychically this way. And sometimes they will be so sly and they can mimic your thinking voice to convince you it's you thinking those things and convince you it's of your own doing. This can be extremely dangerous and can lead to influence and possession. Actually, a lot of, but obviously not every single case, but many, many crimes and even murders happen in this way because the spirit convinced them to do a certain action and then they did the action because they thought it was them thinking of doing the action and it pretty much brought on this compulsion of them having to do the action. Hopefully that makes sense. And later into the season, I will be talking about just that. And I will be talking about some serial killers where this is the case. But fear not. This only happens in the most severe cases and can easily be identified and stopped once you learn and understand your own thinking patterns. If you yourself can't get down your own thinking patterns, go see a therapist or go see a psychologist where they will help you identify yourself. It's very helpful actually. Because I studied psychology and you know sociology and anthropology, it made me very aware, even before my awakening, how I think and why I do the things I do. So I highly recommend even studying those things. Study psychology. Honestly, if you're in this field, study psychology. Get an idea, at least of yourself, of why you do the things you do and then apply it to other people too. Um, it'll help you if you are going into this field with the intention of helping other people. You're gonna need to know psychology anyway because you're gonna need to be able to distinguish mental illness versus the paranormal. And let me tell you, they kind of like sometimes intermingle because you'll have entities that will use mental illness against their victim and or vice versa 
if they didn't already have a mental illness, entities can cause mental illness. And so, yeah, you might as well just learn psychology anyway. Other things I personally experience are sounds such as knocks, bangs, and mimicked activity such as voices or noises I associate with like household members or family members. So one that I've noticed a lot is I'll have spirits come into my house and start trouble and I'll hear sounds associated with my dog doing naughty things. And it'll make it sound like my dog, Ghost, is getting into things that he shouldn't when in actuality he's not and he's just like sleeping and passed out. I would hear him doing things that he shouldn't be doing and then I would just yell. Well, when you do that, you're inserting negative energy into the space. And what does that do? It feeds the spirit or entity that, you know, needs the negative energy to feed off of. So, earthbound spirits or negative non-human entities, poltergeist, whatever feeds on negative energy, you're feeding them a free meal there, okay? So I learned this pretty freaking quickly because I would be like, what is going on? Eventually, I got smart enough and not lazy and I would stop what I'm doing, get up, investigate, and see that he's actually passed out and not doing anything wrong. And I got wise, because let me tell you, I felt really bad when I realized Ghost was being a good boy and I yelled at him for no reason. And it made me frustrated. And I'd be like, you motherfuckers, like you just made me yell at him for no fucking reason. And yeah, so I now get up and investigate because I'm not yelling at my good boy. He's a good boy. But yeah, 9.5 out of 10 times, it's spirits testing my patience and trying to get me to insert negative energy into the space so they can feed off of it. I've heard doors open and closing. I've heard garage doors opening, like the mechanics of the garage door at my parents' house opening when it didn't open. Fucking weird. Creaks in the floor. Voices that sound like family members. You ever hear like someone call your name and they'll go and be like, did you just call my name? And they'll be like, no. Claire audience. <laughs> It, yeah, I've experienced a whole host of things. In the beginning stages of my awakening, it all started during that in-between state of like sleeping but not quite sleeping, like your body's asleep but your mind isn't. And yeah, so I would start hearing conversations like um, spirits talking to one another and then I would hear spirits talking to me and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? It sounds like I'm in like some kind of park and I'm having casual conversations with people and you know it's funny too because when I was at my old office I would fall asleep at work just because it was not busy and I was sick and I would start hearing conversations and I would be like oh my god there's a customer and there wasn't a customer and I was like what the heck is that what's going on and honestly um unintentionally just from that experience of training myself to hear everything around me so I can try and sneak and get away with napping at work, which a lot of times it's not that I was lazy. Like I said, chronically ill here. Sometimes, you know, your body works overtime and you just doze off, right? Well, I trained myself to be able to hear customers walk in and hear them coming before they even hit the building. And because I did that, it kind of snapped me into an alternate consciousness, pretty much astral projecting. So like my consciousness was there, but my body was sleeping and that's just my body adapting, okay? That's the only thing I could explain it as. But you can train yourself by putting like a bell above your door or like on the handle of the door so you can hear when someone like turns the knob and then it'll alert you to being awake. That's kind of how all that shit happened. Anyway, but yeah, so I noticed when I would f be in that in-between state, activity would pick up and my abilities would enhance tremendously. Now, through meditating every single day for like two to three years and meditating between like two to three hours. Now, you don't have to do two to three hours of meditation. If you want to, great. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. You can do like 20 minutes 
30 minutes, whatever's, you know, whatever you want to do. But, you know, I kind of uh, went above and beyond because I wanted to learn quickly. But so through the meditation of doing that every day, two to three years and doing it two plus hours, my abilities overall had increased and developed. Not to mention the more practice I get through clients and just practicing with friends, like the better I got. It's pretty much like a muscle memory. And this applies to all psychic abilities. The more you practice, the more that muscle remembers and you'll be able to do it easier. And then some practice things you can do, like I stated above, you can try that door thing, rig a bell or something that makes noise so you can train yourself that way. That's a little more complicated and that's something that was more unintentional and something that happened by accident. So you don't have to do it that way, but you can sit there and meditate, close your eyes and just observe all the sounds around you. Just do it that way, honestly. That's the easiest way. Do not have music playing because it's going to distract you, honestly. Turn your phones off. Turn your gadgets off if you can. Obviously, if you can hear electricity coursing through your electronics, not much you can do about it other than turning your shit off. But, you know, do not have things that distract you around that create sound. And just sit there with your eyes closed observe everything you hear, try to figure out where that sound is coming from, and vice versa. You can do it that way. I do that a lot. I used to do that a lot as a kid, Um, especially like being sick and not being able to like move around and do much. I spent a lot of time in like bed and I'd be bored. And I'll be like, what the fuck am I going to do today? I can't just lay here and do nothing. And this is like before, you know, you had cell phones and iPads and shit. Instead of, you know, being able to go outside, I'd have to stay in bed or just lay around. And I would be so bored and be like, what the heck am I going to do? And I would just lay there and just practice. And I didn't know that was a form of meditation back then. Because, you know, as a kid, you don't know. No one taught me this. Back then, I had to learn on my own, and even then, I didn't know what I was learning. But it's a valuable skill. Practicing with other people. If you're going to practice with other people, you can try, like, a telepathy, like, practice where you sit in front of a person, and you have them think a word they don't tell you out loud. They'll think that word and try to impress that word or ingrain that word into your mind. All right? You could do it that way. Honestly... I've never really tried it that way all that often. I'm more of a meditation kind of person. This skill is pretty useful and try focusing on the positives (laughs) instead of the negatives. But yeah, that's all I really got to say about Claire audience. If you have any thoughts, questions, concerns, leave them down below. Tell me what you think. Do you guys experience any of the things that I've experienced? Let me know. But thank you guys so much for watching and Peace out. If you like learning about mediumship and developing your own skills, I highly recommend watching the Clairsentience video where I talk about Clairsentience, how I experience it, and how you can develop your own skill.